Today, I want to talk about one of the most important components or rather the commodities in the tech world. They are the oxygen and the living breathing skull of any electronic device you've ever used. They are used in a variety of industries from automobiles to computing devices, wireless communications, aerospace, any industry you can think of. And we're talking about semiconductors. Now, the pandemic happened in 2020 and the world moved to a work from home system. And suddenly there was a spike in the demand for laptops, for mobile phones, for cameras and things like that. And suddenly a lot of countries realize that it does, it's not that simple to get the semiconductor orders going because it takes at least 12 weeks, at least in the pre COVID days, it used to take 12 weeks for a semiconductor order to be fulfilled. One year later, by March 2021, the time had been increased to 16 weeks. So companies which had, you know, designed their entire process within a 12 to 13 week margin were actually now waiting for longer times. Automakers in America, a lot of manufacturers in China were actually hurt by the supply chain disruption within the semiconductor industry. And that is what we want to discuss today, the fragility of this entire supply chain and what India can learn from US and China when it comes to making, Im making a country immune to this disruption 5, 10, 15 years from now. The first aspect I want to discuss is about the companies that were impacted because that helps us understand the scale of this problem. If I go to America, I remember General Motors had to shut down three plants earlier this year in North America alone. Ford has already said that it's estimating at a loss of $2.5 billion this year because of the chip shortage. Sony, which makes PlayStation and PlayStation 5 just came out, has said that the number of consoles that would be available in 2022 would be limited. Again, chip shortage. BMW has been struggling to keep its plans going in Europe. Volkswagen, which said that the chip supply might stabilize by the end of this year, is also struggling with components for its car. But it's not just the complete product. If you look at the uh, product within a product, say an electronic panel within a car, that's also not being completed by a lot of companies because they do not have the chips. For instance, Nissan, they actually have left out navigation systems in some of their cars they have rolled out recently because the chip shortage is there. There is a brand called Ram Trucks in America which couldn't give their uh, customers the intelligent rear view mirror which is important for the blind spots testing because there was a chip shortage so there have been problems like that and for cars you know the cost now, uh, as a share of the total cost of the car the automotive components the electronic components now constitute 40 percent of the cost 20 years ago it was merely 20 percent because the cars were fairly basic but now with all the electronic panels the fancy screens the gadgets they throw into the cars the cost have gone up and automakers, interestingly, are not the biggest customers of the semiconductor industry as well. Perhaps they're the smallest customers and they have been impacted to this tune. If some estimates are to go by, the auto industry this year alone in America would lose $61 billion. Just in America, just the auto industry and they're the smallest customers when it comes to the semiconductor industry. That is the problem. So the next obvious question is, let's make more of them. Why can't we have more semiconductors? Just now, uh, the Delhi CM Arvind Kejriwal tweeted that the center should give the formula for the vaccine to every state so that they can manufacture it themselves. Well, Arvind Kejriwal has a better shot at making the COVID-19 vaccine than India has right now at setting up an indigenous semiconductor plant. That's how complicated the entire process is. Now, I'll give you some imagination, some numbers to, you know, Tinker with your imagination. Let's let's play with that. In 1971, when Intel came out with its first processor, it had 2300 transistors fitted in this one semiconductor. Now, this one semiconductor is 2 by 2, roughly 2 by 2. You can imagine a rectangle 2.2 centimeter in length and 2.6 centimeter in its width. So not a lot of area, just merely 6, 6.2 square centimeters. Within this size, Intel fit 2300 transistors in 1971 and with a note size of 10 millions of a meter. 10 millions of a meter was the note size back then. Time moved on. We had uh, Intel coming out with 2300 transistors. Then in 1979, Intel 8086, it came out with 29,000 transistors. Pentium in 1993 had 3.1 million, uh, million transistors. 
Pentium 3 in 1999 had more than 9 million transistors and all this was Intel. But the four, three, four decades of undisputed leadership was disrupted by the TSMC and Samsung. TSMC by 2000 was manufacturing chips with 2000, uh, with two, 20 million transistors. By 2006, they had gone to 177 million transistors. By 2010, they had this GeForce GTX 580, which had 3 billion transistors. And now in 2020, you have the GeForce RTX 3090. Google this up. GeForce RTX 3090, which has been designed by NVIDIA, being manufactured by Samsung with 28.1 billion transistors. Apple's M1 chip, you must have heard about it. It's being used in the new iPads and the MacBook Pros. It has 16.1 billion transistors and it's manufactured by TSMC. Now, more number of transistors, more is the computing power, more is the efficiency. And to give you how small this note size is, if you talk about the note size, it's as it's 20,000 times, your human average human head is 20,000 times bigger than this note size. So you have a better shot actually at creating the COVID-19 vaccine in your house and probably in, in this country somewhere instead of creating a semiconductor plant. And the cost is also a factor, of course. If you're looking to set up a plant which is just catering to the automobile sector, the chip requirements are fairly basic there so far. $4 billion, $6 billion should cut it. But if you're looking to set up a full-fledged plant for semiconductors like the ones of TSMC or Samsung, you require at least $20 billion today. Some estimates might say $15 billion. And there's no upper limit because the entire technology is very intricate. It's very complex. And as time moves on, I'm pretty sure the companies which started at 2300 in 1971 won't stop at three, uh, 30, uh, 28 billion transistors in 2021. So they would go on and the process would get more difficult. The cost would only get higher. And that is why it's very difficult to set up a semiconductor plant anywhere in the world just like that and US and China have actually realized this. They've realized the import dependency they have on Taiwan which we'll come to. They've realized the importance of having self-reliance within the semiconductor manufacturing industry. But let's come to the companies now. The entire market is very consolidated here. If I talk about the big three, it's Intel which is from the United States, Samsung from South Korea, TSMC from Taiwan. Their collective revenue is more than the revenue of the next 12 manufacturers, which include your Broadcom, your Qualcomm, Texas Instruments, AMD, NVIDIA. And also, TSMC is a supply to all these companies. So it's a very closely knit market. It's a very consolidated market. But by virtue of geography also, a majority of it is constituting Taiwan. And that is where the problem begins. Now, Taiwan is a ticking diplomatic time bomb, if I might put it that way, in a very blunt fashion. Because Chinese claim it as their own province, Taiwan recognizes itself as an independent nation, the US recognizes itself as an independent, uh, as Taiwan as an independent nation. And a lot of reports, a lot of media studies, a lot of observers, analysts, all of them have said that the next point of conflict between US and China would be Taiwan. And there have been some Chinese fighter planes roaming around the Taiwanese territory. So there have been problems like that. Now imagine Taiwan with TSMC plants and being majority of the export across the globe for semiconductors. What if it was in the middle of a war between US and China? What would it do to the supply chain disruption across the world? Today, automakers are losing $61 billion in America alone. What would happen if a war actually breaks out and countries realize that? U.S. realized that. China realized that in 2020. So U.S. has got uh, Joe Biden signing an executive order. The first couple of weeks he came into office, an executive order was signed where the U.S. government was to study the problem of manufacturing uh, in America when it comes to semiconductors. Already, tech, TSMC is setting up a plant worth $12 billion. Samsung is setting up a plant in America. So the Americans have got it going for themselves, at least to begin with. Intel is also setting up, um, rather expanding its own plant in America. But the problem of China was also there. China was exporting, ex, uh, importing semiconductors worth $300 billion everywhere. But for them, the self-reliance was also a problem because during the Trump administration, because of the sanctions imposed, they were not granted access or probably their access was cut off to important design chip technology to, you know, prob uh, that actually disrupted their own supply chains domestically. 
So in a sense, US is going for the plans because it realizes the importance of uh, being self-reliant. China is going for it because of the sanction experience they had with, during the Trump reign. Now, they have decided to invest, as their last year's five-year plan points out, that they have decided to invest $1.4 trillion into chip-making technologies along with other critical technologies, $1.4 trillion. So China is also well on its way. But the problem is, what if China uh, does to Taiwan what it did to Hong Kong just last year? That is the big question. And what if India goes to war with China, say, 5-10 years from now, and our access to that semiconductor supply is cut off? It, I mean, it's all very unimaginable until it really happens, but it can happen. Just when the Ladakh conflict broke out between India and China, we were having a problem with the APIs, and that was also before the pandemic. But the problem of depending on one country for all your critical imports is a problem. And that is what India must learn from US and China. Now, the Indian government, by the virtue of production-linked incentive scheme, it has expressed interest in getting some companies to set up shop in India to set up their plan. They're offering $1 billion in cash incentives. They're offering some infrastructure support. But will that be enough? They're offering some tax breaks too. Perhaps what they need is a government back channel because semiconductor manufacturing is not something very simple. It's more complicated, far more tedious, far less rewarding in its early years than any other industry. And therefore, the government must start using back channels, engage with the government of South Korea, with that of Taiwan, and even the United States to get one of the big three to set up shop in India. Because that would be a very worthy investment at this hour, probably in the next one or two years. Because if even TSMC, for example, was to commit to building a plant tomorrow in India, if it were to sign the order, it would take at least four or five years before the plant was fully operational. So there's a lot of time attached to it. There's a lot of cost attached to it. And while the government has made a very sincere effort of offering $1 billion, perhaps it can be increased to 3 to $5 billion over a period of 5 to 10 years. The infrastructure support can be increased because there's a lot of requirement for undisrupted power, water, clean rooms, and things like that. So the government might actually increase the infrastructure support. But the point is, India is still light years away, light, light years away, from imagining an indigenous company coming up with a semiconductor manufacturing plant. But if it ever has to, say 20, 25, 30 years from now, who knows when, it needs to start with getting one of the big three to come make an India. Thank you.